they walk on two legs, have their own protective armor, and require armed guards. There's one on watch every time animal keepers take Aura the pangolin out for a walk. That's because there's a high risk of her being abducted. Her scales are worth 15,000 euros on the black market. Aura was just a juvenile when she was rescued from poachers. So we have many security measures in place, um, which we don't make known to the public. So overlapping security helps us. Um, and the unpredictability of um, rehab of pangolins. We're constantly changing sites and locations. Um, some days they're well, some days they're not well. So there's no set pattern as to when we are out in the bush or where we're going. Sometimes police seize illegally trafficked pangolin scales, like here in Malaysia. Hundreds of pangolins die to fill the contents of these sacks. Many believe the scales can help against cancer or promote a better sex life, but they're actually made of the same substance as fingernails. Pangolin meat is also highly sought after. In parts of Africa and China, a bowl of soup served with a baby pangolin can sell for 3,000 euros. The animals at Natalie Rogers' sanctuary were all rescued from the hands of poachers. Some of the pangolins need medical help when they arrive because they haven't eaten in weeks. Poachers don't kill pangolins immediately, preferring to trade live specimens. Some animals are still so young that Natalie Rogers has to feed them milk from a syringe. Aura needs to gain weight too. Every day she gets put on the scales. Today she's 4.8 kilos. Since she arrived at the animal sanctuary five months ago, she's gained about a kilo. One more and she can be released. There's still so much still to learn on them, um, but on her weight that she arrived in at, um, they would usually still be in the mother's territory, not milk dependent, but still within the mother's territory before they became um, efficient enough to find their own food and find their own territory. Um, so we're, it's unknown what happened to her mother. A team of rangers is dedicated specifically to tracking down the poachers. Glenn Thompson is in charge of the group. He shows us antelope tracks, but he says tracks left by pangolins are hard to find in the bush. Over the course of many years observing animals in the wild, he and his colleagues have only ever seen one. Pangolin, um, if you look at the bottom of their feet, they've got a very similar foot to an elephant, so it's like very soft and got little lines in it. And they only walk on their two back feet. So most of the time to find the sign of this pangolin is when it's walking its tail. It will leave little marks in the road like this as it hits and goes on. Um, and it's extremely difficult to see their spur. Glenn Thompson and his rangers know how rhino poachers hunt but they can only guess how illegal hunters track down the hidden pangolins. Probably suggests that they're probably using dogs to locate the uh, pangolin um, during the day or because pangolin also move around at night and they're normally in the burrows during the day. So we suspect it's a lot of dog poaching. So, I mean, if they saw it, they'd pick it up, it rolls up into a ball and let's put in the bag and walk off. Thompson and his team have repeatedly confiscated illegal goods and live animals. They've also arrested a number of poachers, although they've probably caught only a fraction of the criminal gangs that operate here. The rangers are dependent on tips from local residents. So we'll get information that there's someone in a village wanting to sell a pangolin. As soon as we get that information and we can verify that there is a live pangolin, we'll set up a sting operation with the SAPS and then we'll go in and we'll affect the arrest, collect the pangolin and then take it for medical treatment and medical assessment. These poachers stopped to refuel their car. The pangolin was still alive and lying in the cargo area. The rangers had received a tip from a witness. A rescue mission like this is what saved Aura and gave her a new temporary home. Now she can at least go for walks back in the bush. At the moment, still accompanied by her own personal bodyguard.